Hello, this is Michael Beard. Welcome to this video on the Equinox for September 22nd, 2010, and that will be followed by information on the full moon of Libra, which happens on September 23rd. Here is an image of Earth as seen from space. The Earth's equator projected into space is called the celestial equator. The equinox takes place when the sun on its apparent path, the ecliptic, crosses the celestial equator. This happens twice a year at the vernal and the autumnal equinox. This year, 2010, the autumnal equinox is September 22nd. Of course, it's the autumn equinox only in the northern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, September 22nd represents the beginning of spring. It's the vernal equinox. Here's the astrological chart for the exact time of the beginning of the equinox, central daylight time. Here you can see the sun at zero degrees of Libra. Libra is a sign of the balance. And this year, the very beginning of Libra, the equinox, falls at the time of the full moon. The exact time of the full moon is about six hours after the equinox. And this adds some extra potency to this time period. Now this chart has a lot of different aspects to other astrological points. Now I'm going to show just the aspects between the planets. You can see that it really simplifies the pattern and emphasizes what is called the T-square, which is a portion of the cardinal cross. It has the cardinal square between the planet Pluto, which is in Capricorn, and that it is squaring the sun right at zero degrees of Libra and Saturn also in the sign Libra. The square represents crisis and points of tension. It also is related to outer appearance and being able to bring something into concrete expression. Pluto is first ray, which is the ray related to will and purpose. So this relates to finding that focus and balance that can bring that higher purpose and the higher will into expression. That sort of expression of those higher ideas creates a tremendous amount of tension and requires a tremendous amount of focus and spiritual tension in order to bring those higher ideas into expression. Saturn is third ray and represents more of the concrete aspect, the concrete mind. So through the intelligence and that focus can create that tension and that balance to bring that higher purpose and higher ideas into manifestation. Pluto square Saturn also creates that dynamic tension that calls you to your responsibility, to your deeper spiritual responsibility. Saturn is exalted in the sign Libra and is also the ruler on the hierarchical level. And this relates to one making decisions about their direction that they want to go on the wheel of life. Do you want to continue on the same path that keeps you attached to matter or make decisions that lead towards the higher planes, higher perception, and moves towards service to others? 
So with Pluto square Saturn, Pluto has that destroying element of the first ray that can break the attachment to the old forms and the old way of life, allowing you more freedom to make that decision, that difficult decision to move along a new path. It's a conscious decision on your own heart, in the light of your own soul, in spite of what anyone else may say, that you are going to follow that light. Because at the same time, Pluto is also in a square to Jupiter and Uranus, as well as the moon and Pisces. So as you break with the past, the inner determination that you would have to meet your responsibility would bring attention that would allow the higher ideals as represented by Uranus to manifest. That's turning towards the future. And then Jupiter brings in attention that would allow you to expand on your ideas and make them manifest because that is a square which represents concretization. Both Jupiter and Uranus are in what is retrograde motion, which is they appear to be moving backwards. And in a sense, they're going back into the old cycle, which is Pisces, the last sign, which indicates there's still some form of review taking place about the old cycle prior to them moving forward into Aries to really initiate those new ideas and make some powerful purpose represented by Pluto truly manifest. Also at the time of the equinox, Mars and Venus are in Scorpio, where Mars rules. It indicates fighting the battle. The energy at that moment, at the exact moment of the equinox, brings in that energy of Mars to fight the battle, to bring the soul into expression. There are no squares or oppositions to this aspect, this conjunction which indicates that nothing should hinder that victory in battle, which leads to the conscious expression of your true self. Neptune and Chiron together in Aquarius represents the new teaching, the new vision for the new age that's coming. And then Mercury is in Virgo, where it rules, standing alone, representing standing in the mind, holding the mind steady in the light, and being an observer from the standpoint of the soul and the higher mind. So to synthesize, this is the time of the equinox, the time of balance, Equinox is from the Latin equal nights. That means a balance between the inner and outer, between the spiritual life and the outer life, and a time of dynamic decision and of opportunity to respond to the will of God and to follow that will in a very joyful soulful, yet savvy, and balanced, practical, but dynamic way to bring new ideas into the world. Now, approximately six hours after the equinox takes place is the full moon of Libra. That's at 4.18 a.m. Central Daylight Time on September 23rd. We can see in this chart that this T-square is still active. 
and that Pluto has a more exact square to the moon. This is a cardinal square. Cardinal is the cross of the will and purpose. Pluto represents the first ray, as was mentioned, which is the ray of will and purpose. And it brings transformation by transforming the old forms. The keynote for Libra is I choose the way between the two great lines of force. This is very powerful. We are making choices within these two great lines of force, the evolutionary forces and the involutionary forces. And we're finding stability within the ever-changing movement forward. From his book, Symphony of the Zodiac, Torquem Saradarian writes on page 237, Equilibrium is a condition to push the spark forward. Equilibrium is achieved through the development of the will. Equilibrium is replaced by a greater equilibrium through willpower. Willpower is the vertical line of the scales which carries the secret of equilibrium. The pans of the scale are incoming and outgoing energies and when they are balanced, equilibrium is achieved. True equilibrium is an ever-progressing, ever-changing state of the vehicles, the physical, emotional, and mental natures seeking to harmonize with the increasing speed and altitude of the inner spark. Great examples of equilibrium are globes, stars, solar systems, or galaxies, which are held in a state of balance through the forces of attraction and repulsion. Such a condition is not inertia, but a state of intense activity of forces, centers, and beings. Again, that quote was from Symphony of the Zodiac. It is said that equilibrium is actually a dynamic system of energies. So with this dynamic alignment with the equinox, which is a balanced state, followed by the full moon, we can concentrate on how we can find that balance between the will and purpose that we recognize and how to intelligently bring that into outer expression.